subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. See Berufsgenossenschaft. German Maritime Safety Administration. Life Rafts. This is Channel One, the news. Rescue at sea. In the Bay of Biscay, about 40 miles off the Spanish north coast at Santander, a Spanish Navy search and rescue helicopter spotted a life raft with four seamen from the abandoned German cargo vessel Jenny II. The ship got into troubles in heavy seas. The distress call was received by a Spanish coast radio station. The crew were able to abandon ship. They were adrift in a life raft for five hours in rough seas before they were located by a search and rescue aircraft. The seamen were retrieved uninjured. The last to get to safety was the ship's captain. That's terrific. Distress call transmitted, almost dry into the life raft, and only five hours later they're on board the helicopter. Yes, but they were lucky too. But they knew how to handle their life raft. Survival at sea. Could you handle your life raft as well in case of emergency? Biggie Bertram knows what she's talking about. Like all licensed crew members, the radio officer also has to take part in a course on the handling of life-saving equipment. She's just finished her last course on the operation of life rafts. And that meant that she had to sit on the school bench again for a couple of days. The instructor, first of all, touches on the theoretical background to the subject, beginning with the material life rafts are made of. The material. The material is a special rubberized fabric of high strength and corrosion resistance. It is carefully prepared by hand. Here the upper tubes with the canopy support are being mounted. Every raft is designed to stay afloat for several weeks under all weather conditions. One tube on its own can provide sufficient buoyancy in case of need. The main considerations when making this rescue equipment are precision and dependability. Remember, life rafts can save human lives. Extensive trials can prove how much these rafts can put up with. Take for instance this overload test. Chafing along the ship's hull is being simulated here. And here's how the raft responds to an impact when fully loaded. Modern technology is used in this test program. In a wind tunnel at Windforce 12, The raft remains fully operative. Life rafts are built to withstand extreme weather conditions. Let's look at the raft's components. Every raft is provided with a canopy as a protection against the weather and rain collector as well. The entrances can be closed weather tight and are provided with a boarding ladder and grips. Beneath, a gas cylinder for inflating the raft. lifelines around the outside and inside the towing line attachments the rainwater collecting gutter 
To the outside of the lower tube, a seawater activated battery is attached for powering the interior lighting and the exterior flashing light. For future models, the Seeberufsgenossenschaft has cooperated with industry to develop improved boarding ladders. Inside more recent models, there is a dry battery as well. In addition, as in all other rafts, bellows, baler, repair kit and paddle. There is a buoyant knife for cutting the painters. And finally, an emergency pack. The emergency pack contains a sea anchor, fresh water, emergency food rations, first aid kit, survival instructions, daylight signaling mirror and whistle, electric torch, fishing tackle, pyrotechnics. The equipment and basic design of all life rafts is the same, irrespective of whether they are circular, oval or angular, and whether they have a carrying capacity of six or up to 25 persons. Life raft containers can weigh anything from 100 to 185 kilograms, according to size. But first, back to the classroom again. The instructor now goes on to describe the contents and handling of the raft container. That's the cradle, to which the raft container is firmly lashed to prevent it getting lost in heavy seas. The slip hook, the hydrostatic release with the painter, and the weak link. It's essential for us to ensure that the painter is attached to the hydrostatic release so that when the raft is released, it remains connected to the ship. It's not necessary to have a ship available to familiarize yourself with the life raft. A surf pool provides all the training opportunities you need in case of emergency. Previous theory is now going to be put into practice. Instead of the cradle in the classroom, we've now got a tilting ramp. Stand by the lashing. Check launching area clear. Let go the lashing. Before doing so, check that the painter is attached to the hydrostatic release. Stand by the painter. A few meters of slack will facilitate launching. The raft container is ready for launching. A final check outboard. Wait for the container to stop rolling. The side with markings up. That's the correct position for inflating the raft. Depending on the design of the raft, it can be dropped overboard from any height up to 36 meters. The painter is now hauled in until you feel a noticeable resistance. The gas cylinder is opened by a sharp pull. After activation, the raft is kept close to the ship by means of the painter. Depending on size, it takes about 20 to 30 seconds to inflate a raft. Finally, the canopy support is erected. The battery begins to operate the flashing light. The whistling sound is caused by surplus gas escaping through the relief valve. The raft is now ready for embarkation. Use all available means of embarkation, cargo nets, embarkation ladders, or even a rope if necessary. Do your best to get in dry. This is to avoid hypothermia. The worst enemy of the shipwreck isn't water, but cold.
assist the people embarking from inside the raft. From not too high, you can jump onto the canopy of the raft, but only if you're not endangering anyone inside. In some cases, you must be prepared to jump into the water. Cross your arms over the life jacket. This helps to soften the impact of the plunge. Jump feet first, then swim calmly towards the raft to save energy. Try to get in at first go. An underwater view of boarding the raft. You can clearly see the steps of the boarding ladder. If you're on your own, grab and hold on to the lifeline. A secure grip for your feet on the ladder and a firm grip for your hands. Keep your body close to the tube. If there are two of you, the stronger helps the weaker. Two can help the third one. Careful, the entrance is narrow and especially so with life jackets on, so coordinate your movements. With the step-like boarding ladder initiated by the Zeberufsgenossenschaft, embarkation is much easier. What if the raft is upside down? Look for the side with the gas cylinder, because this is the pivoting point. Arrows on the side of the tubes show the shortest route to it. Grab the writing belts that are attached across the base of the raft and stand on the gas cylinder. Hold the raft into the wind, which will catch the canopy and so help you to right the raft. Lean far back and pull at the writing belts. Don't be afraid, the floor is easily lifted up and you'll have a pocket of air to breathe. Now just pull the raft towards your feet and you can surface easily. To avoid entering the water for embarkation, life rafts have been developed which can be embarked from the deck. Here, in the port of Hamburg, we're going to demonstrate the operation of one of these rafts. A crane is specially provided for launching the raft. Of course, it could also be launched in the usual way. Painter and lashing are handled as before. A David-launched raft is provided with a lifting bridle. The launching appliance is equipped with a special lowering hook. The slip mechanism releases the raft as soon as the hook is no longer under load after lowering. Hooking on the ring of the lifting bridle and setting the safety catch on the lowering hook. Is good. 
Los ausschwenken. Swing out the raft. The crane is only operated by hand, so it remains fully operative even in case of power failure. The raft container is now hanging in the right position. The various lines are clearly seen in this shot. Belayed in the middle are the two bowsing lines for holding the raft near the side of the ship. To the right, the container pendant line to prevent injury from falling container shells. And far left, the painter. The crane has a winch brake which can be released by means of a line from within the raft. So nobody has to stay behind. Safety for all. This is the standard of modern safety equipment. Having been activated outboard, the raft is ready for embarkation. A David launch life raft will sustain a considerable overload when suspended by the hook or bridle. Whenever you have to abandon ship in an emergency, never forget to put on warm clothing. After embarkation, cut the slip hook so that the raft is released when waterborne. Release the winch brake. When the raft is waterborne, the hook is no longer under load and the raft is automatically released. In an emergency, you would have to cut the painter now. On every vessel, the muster list assigns each crew member specific safety duties. And if they are to prove effective in case of emergency, the crew has to be mustered and drilled at regular intervals. Roll call at muster station for abandoned ship drill. The squads are ordered to their embarkation stations at the port and starboard life rafts. Handling the ship's life rafts on board cannot be drilled because an inflated raft has to be repacked by expert hands. A demonstration for the benefit of the camera shows the correct emergency procedure. Launching a life raft is a seven-point procedure. Check the painter. Release the lashing manually. Haul a length of a few meters of painter out of the container. Make sure the launching area is clear. Launch the container. Wait for the container to stop rolling. Open the gas cylinder with a sharp pull on the painter. The raft is inflated and hauled alongside with the painter. Wind and current shouldn't drift the raft into a dangerous situation. When the canopy is fully erected, the raft is inflated and ready for embarkation. The person in charge shows how to react correctly if the first jump is not successful. Keep a clear head and swim calmly towards the raft.
and the new boarding ladders prove their merits. Climb down the embarkation ladder without haste, keeping a firm grip on it with hands and feet. You should be wearing footwear and warm clothing to avoid exposure. Do your very best to embark into the raft without getting wet. Help the others from inside the raft. One of the last to abandon ship is the radio officer. The sea is getting rougher. Biggie Bertram had to wait till now before she could leave her radio station. The tide is drifting the raft away. The men can no longer hold it near the embarkation ladder. Biggie has to take the plunge. But she knows exactly what to do. She gets to the life raft in safety. Spitze, bis zuletzt in der Funkbude, fast trocken ins Floß, fehlt nur noch der Hubschrauber. Great. In the radio station till the last moment, then into the raft. Now, just wait for the helicopter.